100% of lower Earth orbit or medium Earth orbit companies ever financed have gone bust. This is because they claim latency matters, and having satellites close to the ground reduces latency. Latency only matters for voice calls, no one cares. For internet transactions, a few hundred milliseconds is irrelevant. Even for Skype voice, it's irrelevant. The money is in data. To get low latency, O3B satellites are close to the ground. This means that they constantly move overhead every 20 minutes or so. To maintain a link with O3B satellites, which travel at approximately 5.239 kilometers per second overhead, you need huge and expensive sets of dishes. This costs hundreds of thousands of dollars and needs complex hosting. A dish for a GEO satellite is $400. As an O3B satellite reaches the edge of the horizon, the distance the signal travels through the atmosphere is very large. It's far greater than the atmospheric travel of a GEO. This means the atmospheric interference is far worse for O3B than a GEO, meaning unreliable service. Moving parts always break. Imagine a highly sensitive antenna which must track satellites across the sky with perfect accuracy 24-7, 365 days a year. It's a dusty, hot, hostile environment. They all break down because moving parts always do. So, the dishes are too huge for most customers. They cost a fortune. The atmospheric attention is very serious. The moving parts are a big risk. And it's all pointless because no one cares about latency anymore. It's a 1994 solution to a 2014 problem. The satellites are risky. The first four already failed in orbit and a partial insurance claim is rumoured. The next four have been sent back to the factory for investigation. What have they said lately? Radiation is extreme. O3B satellites exist in a crazy part of space called the Van Allen Belt. In this zone, highly charged particles from the sun are trapped, creating electrostatic discharge a hundred times greater than the GEO arc. It's like getting a shock from a nylon shirt, only much worse. For this reason, the satellites will not last long. This creates a risk for anyone else using the same frequencies. If an O3B satellite gets zapped and goes rogue, it could end up spraying harmful interference to all other radio systems and the world. So who benefits? The satellite manufacturer gets to make lots of satellites. And when they fail, he gets to make more. But the most cunning plan is spectrum. How so? The O3B dishes on the ground spray the band transmissions all the way around the 360-degree GEO arc. The ITA has a system called coordination, which makes sure that satellite-generated transmissions don't interfere with each other. This is achieved through negotiation. The GEO arc is split into 180-degree slots. If an operator is negotiating with a holder of a slot, which has a satellite already there, he has priority. He is the daddy and can't be interfered with. However, if the slot is empty, O3B can interfere. Thus, O3B can effectively constrain the value of GEOKA band slots not yet brought into use, giving its owner potentially a competitive advantage in future GEO operations. Unless, that is, the companies who already have KA band satellites exercise their rights to say no. In which case, O3B is screwed. The guy with the KA band satellites in the sky holds four cards and O3B has nothing. Watch this space for interesting regulatory news.